Chapter 22. Reina. The answer came to her before she was fully conscious. The initials on the sign at the Baracina. HTK. Not funny, Reina muttered to herself. Not remotely funny. Years ago, Lupa had taught her how to sleep lightly, wake up alert, and be ready to attack. Now, as her senses returned, she took stock of her situation. The cloth sack still covered her head, but it didn't seem to be cinched around her neck. She was tied to a hard chair, wood by the feel of it. Cords were tight against the ribs. Her hands were bound behind her, but her legs were free at the ankles. Either her captors were sloppy, or they hadn't expected her to wake up so quickly. Raina wriggled her fing fingers and toes. Whatever tranquilizer they'd used, the effects had worn off. Somewhere in front of her, footsteps echoed down a corridor. The sound got closer. Raina let her muscles go slack. She rested her chin against her chest. A lock click. A door creaked open. Judging from the acoustics, Raina was in a small room with brick or concrete walls, maybe a basement or a cell. One person entered the room. Raina calculated the distance, no more than five feet. She surged upward, spinning so the chair legs smashed against her captor's body. The force broke the chair. Her captor fell with a pained grunt. Shouts from the corridor. More footsteps. Raina shook the claw sack off her head. She dropped into a backward roll, pulling her, bound, pulling her bound hands under her legs so her arms were in front of her. Her captor, a teen girl in gray camouflage, lay dazed on the floor, a knife at her belt. Raina grabbed the knife and straddled her, pressing the blade against her captor's throat. Three more girls crowded the doorway. Two drew knives. The third knocked an arrow on her bow. For a moment, everyone froze. Her hostage's carotid artery pulsed under the blade. Wisely, the girl made no attempt to move. Raina ran scenarios on how she could overcome the three in the doorway. All of them wore gray camouflage t-shirts, faded black jeans, black athletic shoes, and utility belts like they were going camping, or hiking, or hunting. You're the hunters of Artemis, Raina realized. Take it easy, said the girl with the bow. Her ginger hair was shaved on the sides, long on the top. She had the build of a professional wrestler. You've got the wrong impression. The girl on the floor exhaled, but Raina knew that trick, trying to loosen an enemy's hold. Raina pressed the knife tighter against the girl's throat. You've got the wrong impression, Raina said. If you think you can attack me and take me captive, where are my friends? Unharmed, right where you left them, the ginger girl promised. Look, it's three to one and your hands are tied. You're right, Raina growled. Get another six of you in here and it might make a fair fight. I demand to see your lieutenant, Talia Grace. The ginger girl blinked. Her comrades gripped their knives uneasily. On the floor, Raina's hostage began to shake. Raina thought she might be having a fit. Then she realized the girl was laughing. Something funny, Raina asked. The girl's voice was a gravelly whisper. Jason told me you were good. He didn't say how good. Raina focused more carefully on her hostage. The girl looked about 16, with choppy black hair and startling blue eyes. Across her forehead glinted a circlet of silver. Your Talia? And I'd be happy to explain, Talia said, if you'd kindly not cut my throat. The hunters guided her through a maze of corridors. The walls were concrete blocks painted army green, devoid of windows. The only light came from dim fluorescence spaced every 20 feet. The passages twisted, turned, and doubled back, but the ginger-haired hunter, Phoebe, took the lead. She seemed to know where she was going. Talia Grace limped along, holding her ribs where Raina had hit her with the chair. The hunter must have been in pain, but her eyes sparkled with amusement. Again, my apologies for abducting you. Talia didn't sound very sorry. This lair is secret. The Amazons have certain protocols. The Amazons? You work for them? With them, Talia corrected. We have a mutual understanding. Sometimes the Amazons send recruits our way. Sometimes if we come across girls who don't wish to be maidens forever, we send them to the Amazons. The Amazons do not have such vows. One of the other hunters snorted in disgust. Keeping male slaves in collars and orange jumpsuits. I'd rather keep a pack of dogs any day. Their males aren't slaves, Selene. Talia chided, merely subservient. She glanced at Reyna. The Amazons and hunters don't see eye to eye on everything, but since Gaia began to stir, we have been cooperating closely. 
with Camp Jupiter and Camp Half-Blood at each other's throats, well, someone has to deal with all the monsters. Our forces are spread across the entire continent. Raina massaged the rope marks on her wrists. I thought you told Jason you knew nothing of Camp Jupiter. That was true then, but those days are over, thanks to Hera's scheming. Talia's expression turned serious. How is my brother? When I left him in Epirus, he was fine. Raina told her what she knew. She found Talia's eyes distracting, electric blue, intense and alert, so much like Jason's. Otherwise, the siblings looked nothing alike. Talia's hair was choppy and dark. Her jeans were tattered, held together with safety pins. She wore metal chains around her neck and wrists, and her gray camo shirt sported a button that read, Punk is not dead. You are. Raina had always thought of Jason Grace as the all-American boy. Talia looked more like the girl who robbed all-American boys at knife point in an alley. I hope he's still well, Talia mused. A few nights ago, I dreamed about our mother. It wasn't pleasant. Then I got Nico's message in my dreams. About Orion hunting you? That was even less pleasant. That's why you're here. You got Nico's message? Well, we didn't rush to Puerto Rico for a vacation. This is one of the Amazon's most secure strongholds. We took a gamble that we'd be able to intercept you. Intercept us? How? And why? In front of them, Phoebe stopped. The corridor dead-ended at a set of metal doors. Phoebe tapped on them with the butt of her knife, a complicated series of knocks like Morse code. Talia rubbed her bruised ribs. I'll have to leave you here. The hunters are patrolling the old city, keeping a lookout for Orion. I need to get back to the front lines. She held out her hand expectantly. My knife, please? Raina handed it back. What about my own weapons? They'll be returned to you when you leave. I know it seems silly the kidnapping and blindfolding and whatnot, but the Amazons take their security seriously. Last month, they had an incident at their main center in Seattle. Maybe you heard about it. A girl named Hazel Levesque stole a horse. The hunter Celine grinned. Naomi and I saw the security footage. Legendary. Epic, agreed the third hunter. At any rate, Talia said, we're keeping an eye on Nico and the satyr. Unauthorized males aren't allowed anywhere near this place but we left them a note so they wouldn't worry. From her belt, Talia unfolded a piece of paper. She handed it to Reyna. It was a photocopy of a handwritten note. I owe you one Roman Praetor. She will, be, she will be returned safely. Sit tight, otherwise you'll be killed. XOX, the Hunters of Artemis. Reyna handed back the letter. Right, that won't worry them at all. Phoebe grinned. It's cool. I covered your Athena Parthenos with this new camouflage netting I designed. It should keep monsters even Orion, from finding it. Besides, if my guess is right, Orion isn't tracking the statue as much as he's tracking you. Raina felt like she'd been punched between the eyes. How could you know that? Phoebe is my best tracker, Talia said, and my best healer. And, well, she's generally right about most things. Most things? Phoebe protested. Talia raised her hands in a I give up gesture. As for why we intercepted you, I'll let the Amazons explain. Phoebe, Celine, Naomi, accompany Reyna inside. I have to see to our defenses. You're expecting a fight, Reyna noted, but you said this place was secret and secure. Talia sheathed her knife. You don't know Orion. I wish me I had more time, Praetor. I'd like to hear about your camp and how you ended up there. You remind me so much of your sister, and yet... You know Hyla? Reyna asked. Is she safe? Talia tilted her head. None of us are safe these days, Praetor, so I really must go. Good hunting. Talia disappeared down the corridor. The metal doors creaked open. The three hunters led Reyna through. After the claustrophobic tunnels, the size of the warehouse took Reyna's breath away. An, an area of giant eagles could have done maneuvers under the vast ceiling. Three-story tall rows of shelves stretched into the distance. Robotic forklifts sipped through the aisles, retrieving boxes. Half a dozen young women in black pantsuits stood nearby, comparing notes on their tablet computers. In front of them were crates labeled Explosive Arrows in Greek Fire, 16 Ounce, Easy Open Pack, and Griffin Fillets, Free Range Organic. Directly in front of Reyna, behind a conference table piled high with reports and bladed weapons, sat a familiar figure. Baby sister, Hyla rose. Here we are, home again, facing certain death again. We have to stop meeting like this.